Oh yeah, our church is a 501c With its rules made in D.C. Now we can preach tax exemption right along with redemption. Yeah, our church is a 501c. The Anarcho Christian Podcast, evaluating the relationship between the Christian and the state. By the square, with its steeple so high. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show. Today, We will be discussing church 501c3 statuses, and since this is something that I'm not very familiar with, except for the general uh, discussions on the internet, if it should happen or shouldn't happen, or just general information, I, I really don't know a lot of the details. And so I've asked David Morrison to come on and help us understand what it means for a church to have this uh, status, this 5013C3C status, uh, what it means for them, and uh, you know what are some of the things that we can take away from that um, and bring into these discussions that we're seeing online when people are um, not happy about churches uh, being tax exempt or anything else that kind of comes along with that conversation. So, David, thanks for joining me. Uh, Thanks for having me. And David, before we begin, can you let the audience know what it is that qualifies you to have this discussion today? Well, I have been in the accounting industry and have uh, worked mainly with uh, 501c3, um, you know, religious nonprofits uh, mainly, but I have done, you know, some other uh, organizations uh, that that are 501c3 that are not specifically, you know, religious uh, entities and also some 501c4, which are more, you know, trade organizations and all. And, you know, that's, you know, know, that's kind of where I've, you know, cut my teeth as far as, um, you know, in the accounting world goes. And, and so if I haven't seen it, I know some people who have seen it and I can, always bounce questions and concerns and comments off of them and get a straight answer. And if they don't know, then, um, then they usually point me into somebody who, who definitely, uh, you know, knows what's going on. Okay. So what is the 501c3 status? It is a tax exempt status for, um, Really, in kind of, you know, they're usually a corporation, which a corporation is um, instead of an owner actually owning it, like what you'd experience with a sole proprietor, an LLC, or a partnership. A corporation, the actual business is the person, and everybody works for the corporation. And usually what they're set up for is you know, really any kind of like public good. That's kind of uh, a loose uh, uh, definition there, but they could be some kind of, you know, community fund, a trust, or, or going into specifically churches, charitable organizations. I mean, you could also go into, you know, scientific testing and different, um, you know, you know, avenues along those lines can get uh, 501c3 status also, um, you know, sports organizations can like the NFL. And, you know, of course, that's a whole nother topic for another day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just really any anyone who wants to kind of br- bring the betterment of society can, you know, apply for, you know, a 501c3, you know, status uh, with the federal government. And then also, you know, some states, you know, you have to you know, file with them as well. But, you know, the majority of the states will, you know, recognize your filing if you, um, you know, have gotten the okay from the uh, federal government there. Gotcha. And and didn't we see something, I guess, a couple of years ago where there were some issues uh, about approvals for 501c3s with organizations that were considered conservatives or or something like that? Uh, that's been going around for 
you know, forever. You know, it's just, but it's recently, you know, within the past few years, actually, you know, come up through, um, you know, news medias and all. The good thing with uh, 501c3s is all of their uh, financial reporting is actually made public. So you can go and uh, request that from, you know, really any 501c3 entity. And so you can see exactly what, you know, goes on on there and all. But, you know, you know specifically with the targeting and, you know, there were, um, you know, IRS agents that were specifically out there targeting uh, what what you would loosely, you know, consider conservative type um, organizations like churches and all. And there was actually a big pushback, which I was, you know, really, you know, getting behind because, you know, a lot of them were um, talking about, you know, just, you know, saying forget it with the 501c3 and, you know, going at it, you know, just as, you know, um, a corporation or like or even dropping down to a, a limited liability corporation, which would, you know, give the pastor, you know, some protection if, you know, there was a lawsuit or something against the actual organization. Um, but the bad thing about that was, was a lot of the churches that, that I was witnessing, you know, go through this, they were ended up being more lobbyists for, um, you know, big, you know, government conservative, you know, movements rather than actually getting back to the gospel and, you know, and, um, you know, promoting, you know, Jesus and him crucified and, you know, helping out, you know, you know, your neighbors instead of, you know, actually now becoming lobbyists. Yeah, and that's definitely uh, one of the concerns when people are bringing up this this topic on if churches should should uh, even take on this status of five hundred one c three. I mean, there are some obvious reasons, uh, I guess, as to why you would want to be tax exempt. But um, can you give us some ideas of maybe maybe some more in depth ideas on why a church would uh, would want to be a uh, considered five hundred one c three. Well, if if you think about it, with you know, and this is more kind of pie in the sky. Everything is you know fine, and all things being equal, um, you know they want to you know you know they with five hundred one c threes. There's a lot of federal grants, you know, even federal loans, you know, that actually you know will help them you know, further the gospel or, you know, further whatever cause that they have. And it's, and it's, there's a lot of free money out there. So you have, you know, dollar signs in the eyes and, and all, you know, like, look what we can do with this kind of money. Look what we can do with, you know, uh, that kind of money. There's also tons of um, exemptions as far as, you know, you know, property taxes, a, um, a big one, especially here in the state of Tennessee, that's about really, you know, you know, the quote unquote largest size tax that, you know, we really have here for the most part. Um, but, you know, there's there's a lot of benefits, but there's also a lot of, you know, different little loopholes that they can fall into. And just uh, it's, you know, it, while it's, you know, appealing to the eyes to start off with, it's it's not necessarily the best course of action, per se. Yeah. Um, so there is an exemption uh, of taxes, so they're not paying taxes. So that's that's money you get to keep. Are is there an opportunity to receive federal dollars as well? Oh yeah, definitely. You know, through um, you know, there's a lot of grants that you know come out you know through the government you know for. You know, different things. For example, if there's a church that has a um, a counseling center that's attached to it, that a counseling that counseling center can um, you know reach out, research you know exactly what kind of you know grants are available for them, and you know they'll apply for them. Yeah, and I actually have a few friends that are grant writers in them, and you know. And they can pretty much, you know, set their own salary because of how much money they they get in each year for those uh, nonprofits that they work for. Um, so there, you know, it is definitely a you know a lot of money you know out there. But you know, the thing is, there's a lot of strings attached uh, uh, with those. Um, you know, for example, the 
well, I was just referencing with, um, you know, the uh, counseling centers is uh, there's one I actually go to and they actually, you know, turned down a couple of grants after, you know, they were, um, you know, told by the, um, the grant administrator from, I can't remember what agency it actually was in the, on the, this was a state um, grant that they got that they had to start accepting, you know, so many of, you know, low income status, um, you know, patients in which that wasn't you know, necessarily their market. You know, they were more, um, you know, as far as like, you know, men, you know, dealing with, um, you know, shame and, you know, kind of more or less, you know, man issues, you know, type thing. And so they weren't really drawing in that crowd and, and they kept pushing them and pushing them. And the director finally said, Hey, we're not going to take this, you know, money anymore and just kind of handed it back. But, you know, you know, like I said previously, you know, once, you know, people start seeing the money, you know, they get stars in their eyes, they get the dollar signs and, and then they're ready to, you know, take all the money they can get, but you know, it does have a lot of strings attached. So in your experience, have you seen, um, many churches or church members, um, give back the money or I guess cut ties with, uh, with certain grants and things like that, uh, from noticing that there's strings attached? That's the only one that I've uh, personally, you know, heard about. Um, usually, you know, my experience has been, um, you know, that they'll comply to whatever the, the grant actually, you know, says, Mm -hmm. um, there was a, um, a church up in, um, Indiana, you know, I got a ton of stories about them. I'll probably reference them a a few more times. Um, they, they received some federal funding, but the federal funding was for politicians to come and speak at their church. And one of those uh, politicians is a. I, I'm I'm not a big fan of him, but some of uh, your viewers, you know, might be on the on the side. But, uh, is uh, Jesse Jackson, and I was like, I need to see exactly what he's going to say, and you know, and what they were, what it was, was it was right around the Fourth of July, and so they were looking for more of a, you know, America unity type thing, and you know, it was a, you know, very nationalist you know type of Mm -hmm. you know church you know they you know said the prayer uh, not the prayer but they said the pledge you know (laughs) you know every you know sunday to start off the services and all and it just it just didn't set well with me even back then before i really even you know started diving into you know really what i believe politically but you know he got up there and he was supposed to talk about unity but he kept talking about how um you know there was a big divide and it was just a complete you know difference from what he was supposed to be talking about I actually withheld his check <laughs> wow and and uh and so my boss actually had to uh write the check and you know get it signed off and sent to him because i wasn't going to do it because at that point you know he becomes a you know a lobbyist in that church and that church could lose their 501 and i was like yeah i'm not gonna you know, i'm not gonna do that but you know, there's you know churches that will that will bow down to the to the money on you know on those issues. Now, whether to you know split hairs and say that you know that they're keeping the money so they can fund the gospel or not, you know, I, I'm not going to be the judge of you know, of that part. But what what I am going to do is I'm going to look and say, you know, is you know can God provide? Is there another way to um, to get that money or not? But you know, I, it's just a very slippery soap once that happens. Right. I think that um, it doesn't take much imagination to kind of see that slippery slope and see where this gets us when we're, you know, turning the pulpit into lobbying and we are making decisions based on money that can be made. And I'm wondering, uh, there has to be some sort of loophole here because if I'm not mistaken, there's, isn't, isn't there a law or multiple laws that prevent uh, politics from being, being spoken from the pulpit? Some sort of, uh, I guess, maybe it's just anything short of an endorsement. Um, aren't, aren't there laws uh, like that? Does this somehow, you know, 
con- conflict with that? There are, um, but it's it's like that little you know gray area in there where they're, um, it, you know, they can't come out and say, "Hey, I endorse this person here," um, or "I don't endorse this person." It's more or less, you know, you know, you can have a politician in there, but you have to uh, give the other um, like opposing politician to that politician you know, the same, you know, invitation, like, hey, I would like for you to come and, you know, speak mm-hmm. to our, our, you know, church at this time. And and, I'll, and it can be more, it, it can't be an actual campaign speech, but it can be more or less like, you know, this is my testimony. This is what I believe and, and all. But, you know, I even will take it a step further. And, and I and I sit there and I say, that's, I, I don't personally think that's, you know, correct because they're using it for, their position to get votes and you know the mm-hmm. evangelical christians you know that is a you know a big majority of them and then there's a lot of them that just that just don't vote and then of course we're criticized by the ones that do you know you can't complain that's like well i'll complain all i want to <laughs> you know but um you know it's it's like i said it's just a slippery soap and it's on its own little animal yeah uh you know you don't have to actually give a, an endorsement, but when you have you know someone come and speak from your pulpit and uh, give some sort of a you know emotional message, that pretty much speaks for itself as an endorsement, in my opinion. Right, I would completely one hundred percent agree with that. So, with the money that the churches are making and the exemptions that they also receive. Um, we're talking about a wide variety of um, churches, I guess, based on income. Um, small churches, big churches. I'm assuming that the work that you've done has probably seen all of it. Is there something to be said about the willingness to accept these grants and exemptions uh, that might differ between the small or the mega church? Not necessarily. Um, I've, I've worked with, uh, you know, you know, a few of the mega churches of what would make the, the list. Um, I used to work for a public consulting uh, firm here in East Tennessee that uh, handles uh, religious nonprofits and specifically, you know, and I'm going to use the word praise on them. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, he, and the um, owner really kept, you know, those churches in fear, you know, that the IRS was going to, you know, come after you and all. And so he, he would kind of push them to be more offering and, you know, grant and even, you know, uh, commercial and um, federal loan, um, you know, in, in that area, and just try to get as much money as you could to, um, you know, you know, quote unquote, further the kingdom. But it ended up being more, more or less, a tax shelter, which that's a whole other thing that uh, a five hundred one c three, you know, can end up being is, you know, with all the exemptions and everything that they're uh, um, allowed you know, on the federal level, plus on the state level. Um, you know, it varies from, you know, of course, state to state, but uh, you could sit there and you could, you know, buy, you know, tons of land and, and all, and just kind of, you know, keep that in there as like, quote unquote, church, you know, land and bases and everything. So once, you know, he would show these pastors on how to um, really, you know, amass that wealth and, you know, how to, you know, use it, you know, very loosely for the kingdom of God. Um, you know, it, you know, it really opened up their eyes to exactly what they could do with it, what they, you know, really didn't want to do with it. And, and, and it just, and so to, but to answer your question, as far as, you know, if there was, you know, a difference or, you know, if it was, it was just pretty much, you know, like on the, on the scale, if it was a small scale and they, got a little bit of money on that. They were going after a little bit more money. Um, but it, so it wasn't necessarily like, you know, with their, you know, donations coming in that they were saying, you know, 
okay, so we have only have a thousand dollars here. You know, what can we do with this thousand dollars to you know serve the community or you know do missions or whatever? It's you know, hey, let's let's get a little bit more. Let's get a little bit more. Let's, mm-hmm. You know, let's do this. Let's you know, let's do that. Let's take out this loan here, and then you end up with a church that's you know up to its eyeballs in debt. And, you know, it's not effective for the kingdom at all because that, that's the sole purpose of, you know, the church is, you know, is to go into the world and, and tell everybody the good news. And you can't do that with um, debt. You know, I'm personally on that uh, journey. My wife and I will be debt free this year. And, you know, it's, it's eye opening to see exactly, you know, what you couldn't do before. And now you can. And you're like, man, this is the catching this and so it's you know once they you know once they start seeing that money and i'll can you know bring it keep bringing it back to this you know it's uh, it's going to have to be a hard issue of exactly what to do with that money and you know how to properly steward it because it it can it can get overwhelming very quick yeah like you said um seems to easily uh, take your, your mind off of the, you know, original mission of the church and uh, preoccupy you with what are we going to do with this money or how can we get more money? Um, have you witnessed that, I guess, in person with people actually making that statement or... Um, you know, saying we we can't do this because it'll jeopardize the money, or we need to do this so that we can get more money or retain more money. Where that ends up being the the focus of the discussion. You can definitely see the mindset of churches that mm-hmm. you know, you know, because and I've talked to you know more about the the negative side, you know, because you know that's what you know um, you know people really want to focus on. But there's churches out there that are doing the the right thing. You know, I've you know, I won't stay around at a church where, you know, they're deep in debt or, you know, they're not doing what they, you know, say they are with the money. And, you know, in our you know, local church, you know, they're, you know, very good about that. You know, yeah. and you, you hear about um, some of these churches where they're um, focused on buying these high-end luxury uh, jets and things like that. Um, and you mentioned earlier land. Um, these sorts of purchases... It, in your experience, is that something that um, is out there for the rest of the church to really see where the money's going? A lot of them, a lot of them don't because it's never, it's never really talked about, mm-hmm. um, you know, and then with a lot of the, um, the land that's purchased, you know, of course that's kind of what, you know, a massive elephant in the room, you know, the church acquires, you know, a hundred acres somewhere, you know, it's, you know, it's public record. And so people can ask questions about it. And I know a lot of churches that will, will you know, do that and make like a youth back there. And then also give a, you know, spot where the community can, you know, come and, you know, have a, an outing there. There's a, there's a church actually, you know, about 30 minutes up from us that bought a, um, an old abandoned campground, but they, um, they stocked the lake in there. And so, um, Mm -hmm. they invite, you know, kids that are, you know, 12 and under to come over there and just, Mm -hmm. um, you know, catch and release. And, you know, as I told my son, I'm like, this is a real big confidence booster because when you go out to a real lake, this doesn't happen. (laughs) (laughs) And so, you know, and, and they invite everybody and anybody out there that, you know, they want. But, you know, a lot of churches will just, you know, kind of have, you know, their own little spot for, you know, pastors and, you know, teachers and, and all just to kind of, you know, come and, you know, relax. Like, you know, this uh, this church up in Indiana, they, they had – and actually what was really, really funny about it was they are right on the border between uh, Indiana and Illinois – and they in in that section of Illinois, um, the property um, right there because it actually split the line. It's not tax exempt for five hundred one c three, so they had to pay Illinois property tax on on that side that they um, they bought there. And you know they used it for um, you know just you know different things for the um, 
for, you know, for the pastors, you know, they put on there an, another, um, uh, it, the time I was there, they were putting on a cabin for the pastor's wife and then they were, um, making like a, um, it was like a warehouse for, um, the, uh, her husband, the main pastor for him to, you know, store a bunch of his, um, uh, uh, props for, you know, sermons and, and all. Um, but they weren't going to, you know, open it up to church use, which I was really sad about because there was a, you know, amazing lake that actually split the properties together. And, yeah. And of course, you know, being a Southern boy up there in uh, Indiana, you know, they, you know, weren't going to allow any kind of fishing or anything. <laughs> <in> there, <so. laughs> um, but, but yeah, there's, you know, there's some churches that are doing it right. And then there's others that, you know, like I said, just, you know, exploit the fact that, um, uh, that, you know, since they are, you know, tax exempt as, you know, as far as, you know, some of those purchases and all, um, they, you know, they just kind of, you know, amass wealth that way. Yeah. Uh, you know, we look at some of these purchases and we can see where they would definitely be, um, a good, you know, purchase for the community or for the church members and at least on their surface. Um, but what kind of a draw is there, do you think, to relying on these grants for what could be personal use? Um, so these grants, this 501c3 status is, uh, you know, an opportunity for certain members involved to, you know, to use this to then, you know, make a make a personal gain, even though it's labeled as a as something for the whole church, but it ends up being a personal gain. Is that something that you've been aware of or you've seen? Yeah. Unfortunately it's, it, you know, the, the churches that I dealt with, um, it was very, very common. Um, just a, a few of them there, there was one of them where they were, um, taking a, you know, and just come back up here with, uh, grants, you know, there are, um, you know, those that have to be used specifically for, for uh, that purpose or, you know, you have uh, other grants that can be used kind of like a general purpose. So, for example, if you have a, um, you know, a, a church, you know, and you get one of those kind of little all-purpose grants there, you know, it could be used for, you know, paying utilities, paying the pastor, you know, it could be used for missions, you know, however, like that. But if you get something that's specific, say for, you know, um, urban or inner city, um, you know, uh, use, it has to be used for that. And you have to provide documentation on, uh, that part there. So, you know, some of those audits can be, you know, ridiculous on, you know, that end as far as the actual documentation, which is also a good thing because, you know, that's, you know, that's our tax money being, you know, used and spent. Um, but is, it, you know, there was one church that, you know, I remember in you know, particular, they had a, um, they, they ended up getting a grant to open up a daycare, but they never actually opened up that daycare, but they received the grant money. And that, that grant money was, you know, all spent. And they said that they gave it to a, another entity that had a daycare that just so happened that the, uh, the pastors had grandchildren that went there. Wow. Grants and, and all, you know, they... I mean, they, they literally, you know, tie your hands with what you, you know, can use them on, what you can't use them on. And then, you know, you get, you know, really addicted to them. You know, it's, it's almost equivalent to, you know, in this course, and, you know, another topic for another day, you know, is, uh, you know, farmers and their subsidies, you mm -hmm. know, you, you, you know, being a, you know, hobby farmer as well, you know, I, I see a lot of that where, you know, they're, and they are addicted off of that you know, government money. And, you know, you're just like, you need to do things on your own one step at a time, you know, and yeah. just pay for it, you know, that way. But, you know, I mean, the money is, you know, a very appealing and, you know, you can, you know, use it for, you know, personal use and, you know, tell others that, you know, it's, you know, it was actually for the church, you know, but the, the best I ever had, Stephen, was, um, there, there was a, a church that, you know, I was uh, reconciling the uh, bank account and it was, um, it, it, they had gone to the 
liquor store and it was an actual liquor store purchase. And they're like, oh, this is communion wine. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't think that that was. And so, um, you know, I, I called the liquor store and I was like, do y'all have communion wine? And the guy just laughed at me. And, uh, and, uh, I was like, can you give me a bill of sale for this day for, you know, this purchase here, credit card ending and, and this, he's like, yeah. And I was <laughs> And there was more bottles of Jack Daniels on that list than I've ever seen in real life. <laughs> but you know, it, you know, like I said, it is it is very tempting, you know, to you know want to keep that money and want to you know use it for you know personal use there. Yeah, and as you said, you know, it can uh, tie your hands, and even drawing it back to the the farmers and what we know that the farmers will do uh, to receive those grants that, and those subsidies that they'll, they'll only plant, you know, what the government has them plant, which, you know, we know that the disaster that can come from that, that they plant too much of one crop and then it just goes to waste. Um, getting back to the churches and having their hands tied. And then is it the same that they are then held to do what the government says as well? So we're not talking planting, you know, corn, but as far as the things that they can and can't say, uh, the things that they can and can't do, uh, is that an issue? It definitely is, you know, especially, you know, at the uh, time we're recording this, you know, it was just about a week, week or so ago up about the Methodists coming out and ruling, you know, on, you know, traditional marriage. And, you know, that they would, you know, stand behind that and, you know, that it's, you know, marriage is uh, one man and one woman. Um, and with, I mean, that, that right there is a whole can of worms in itself. But, you know, there are, you know, certain things where, you know, you can, you know, that you're not supposed to say in the pulpit. But, you know, according to God's word, you know, you know, you know, it's, you know, sin is sin is sin is sin. Um and then you have, um, you know, pastors that have side jobs. You know, there was one in Atlanta. It's been, I want to say it's been right about five, six years ago. And it kind of made like a, a massive, um, you know, um, amount of news coverage at that time. It was um, a pastor that was also, I believe he was right over the, the health department down there in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, but he was, you know, of course, you know, preaching on, you know, Sundays and and he was fired for, you know, talking about, you know, homosexuality and, um, you know, pre- preaching, you know, traditional marriage, you know, the way the Bible, it, you know, is, uh, you know, laid out. And he, you know, was, you know, and of course, he, you know, sued. And yeah, I believe he ended up getting his, uh, you know, job back on that. But, yeah, there's, you know, there's um, IRS auditors that will actually look at. Uh, the content of the of the sermons, and so a lot of a lot of the churches that do receive grants, you know, I mean, it's not going to be you know something like, you know, you know, homosexuality is wrong, drinking's wrong, and you know, and of course, is you know, and some you know, pastor says, you know, uh, alcohol may not have touched your lips, but that fifth helping of biscuits and gravy sure did, and you know, nobody wants to you know really you know you know, kind of push that envelope, but, you know, there's churches that do. And unless you're just, you know, out there saying, you know, this person should be president, this person is horrible, you know, I'm going to kill this person, I'm going to do this, do this, and I'll, you know, they're they're not going to look heavily at your, you know, sermon notes, but they are, you know, they're going to keep an eye on you as far as exactly what's, what's going on and and, you know, it also depends upon, you know, different administrations about, you know, how, you know, tied or, you know, whatnot, they're actually looking at, you know, the records. Uh, for an actual church audit, um, it's not really held um, to a higher level like um, like a traditional audit on a, um, on a uh, S Corp or a C Corp would be you know, would be like, you know, a, a J.P. Morgan or, you know, even, um, you know, GE or any or any big name company like that, you know, with, 
you know, 501 C threes, you know, they just kind of look at them like, okay, so there's, there's where it's coming in. There's where it's going out. And, you know, let me, you know, see, you know, what your donations look like. Let me see, you know, you know, a couple of, you know, sermons and they'll usually let you handpick those unless, you know, there's been some kind of, you know, drama that's, you know, come about of, you know, something, but. Well, is there a, uh, is there a list, uh, either vague or in depth, that I guess churches receive when they receive the status that says that you can or can't do, you know, these certain things? Kind of yes and no. Um, on, and I'm, and I'm glad you said that. Uh, you know, with uh, the way that they file uh, for that 501c3, is you know they have to you know, they have to put together a bunch of, you know, financial documentation. They also have to fill out a, a form, um, uh, with, yeah, 1023. And that gives you exactly what all you need to, uh, to file on, uh, that in, but it kind of gives you, a, a kind of a, an overview of, you know, what's, what's kind of acceptable, what's, you know, not acceptable and all. Um, and a lot of the, um, you know, the mainline denominational churches actually have, you know, kind of more of a, you know, cut and paste thing that they'll actually give you when you're applying for your 501c3 of, you know, what you can and what you can't say, um, what constitutes, you know, um, lobbying, you know, you know, what's, you know, um, you know, with grant money, you know, saying, you know, this is, you know, something you shouldn't do with it. You know, it's, you know, so there, there is, but it's not like, you know, you know, set in stone per se, you know, it, it's subject to change depending upon, you know, which ruler we have in place at the moment. Sure. I'm sure. It's kind of, you know, vague in some areas kind of leaves it up to the interpreter. Um, have you seen any churches, uh, I guess, give up their 501 C3 status or just not even apply for it out of, um, just pure conviction? I haven't personally, you know, seen any. Of course, I was more on the, you know, commercial end where, um, you know, the the owner of the um, the uh, company was, you know, pretty much kept everybody in fear, you know, with, you know, churches and all about, you know, that they need to make sure they have a 501c3 status and that they need to use his services to, um, you know, do his, you know, do their accounting and, and, um, you know, that the IRS is going to come out there and going to get you if you leave me and, you know, which uh, that's not the case. Um, but you know, I, I did have a friend that tried to start a, um, a nonprofit and he raised money for, um, toys for Todd's and he, I, you know, did a real good job of it because everything that went in went straight back out. There was no, um, you know, salaries or anything like that. Um, yeah, you know, he just you know with money he came in, he bought toys for toys for tots, and then um, you know had a big donation you know drop off thing, and pretty much got everybody to volunteer something and some uh, form of anything and everything, and um, you know he was actually really successful at it, and then he just you know kind of you know dropped it from there, and I was like, you should just keep it going without even. You know, doing the five hundred one c three, he's like, mm-hmm. man, there's no real benefit to it. And I'm like, mm. nah, there actually is. <laughs> you know, you know, just because you don't get an immediate benefit from it, doesn't mean that it's you know that it they're not beneficial. You're, you know, this is a long term investment. You know, but yeah, you know, personally, I haven't you know seen any that you know have said no, we're not going to do a five hundred one c three. We're you know we're going to you know you know do it by you know the way of the land and then. We're going to, you know, apply for this. And th- the thing is, and, you know, this is just my kind of little theory behind it, is the government does not think that we are, you know, as far as, you know, believers, that we're not generous with our money. So we, so, you know, they have to offer the incentive of it being tax deductible, which I'm kind of more or less like, you know, why does the government want to know what I'm giving? And so you know, you look at it and you're you're like, okay, so I'm you know doing this, I'm giving to God, but I'm also getting a tax deduction. 
well, forget the tax deduction. Let's just let's just give to God, you know. <laughs> and you know, so what? You know, it, and so I think that the you know government, if they took that off and said, no, tax the you know deductible giving is not um, you know allowed anymore, that they think that you know that you know it'll you know people will stop giving. And I don't necessarily you know think. You know, I, I think what would lose out if they did that would be more the, you know, the secular, um, you know, nonprofits that are, you know, set up. Mm-hmm. And but I, th- I think the church would, you know, still, you know, you know, go strong. Of course, that's, you know, Saint David chapter one verse one, you know, type thing of you know, the nonprofits. But, you know, I kind of think that they would, you know, still keep going. Yeah, you know, we we use the term nonprofit for this, but uh, you know, we've definitely seen some ways that you can profit off of it. <laughs> oh, definitely. So you, you said that, you know, there's people receiving all this money in there and some of them are buying things that are, you know, obviously um, questionable for, for a nonprofit organization to have, but um, to, to try to look at it from a different perspective, I'm, I'm trying to think, well, maybe that's okay, right, for them to spend that kind of money or have that kind of money rolling in. Is there anything maybe that you've seen or from your perspective that shows that the grant money is playing a big part in this? It it does because it's just kind of free money out there. Well, it's not really free money because that's our, you know, hard earned tax money right. there. Um, but you know, it just, it, there's different earmarks for different things, you know, as far as what's available out there through, uh, various different state, you know, even local and also on the federal level. Um, but you know, if you get a good grant writer, you know, that can, you know, go alongside your ministry and, the possibilities are endless. They can make your, you know, um, nonprofit seem like, you know, the be all end all. And, you know, this is what we're doing with the money. This is what we're, you know, doing, you know, with this and that and all. Um, and really look at it like, you know, this is, you know, this is where your best bet is. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, each year they have an audit that they have to do, if they have commercial loans or if they have, um, you know, really any kind of, you know, government, you know, grants, you know, somebody has to do an audit on that fiscal year and they have to, you know, report back, um, you know, the findings within a certain time period or you'll be fined or you could lose the grants uh, permanently. And so, hmm. you know, they want to make sure that the, the money is being spent, you know, you know, correctly, which is definitely a good thing. But, you know, they hold some nonprofits to a higher standard than, you know, others like Planned Parenthood could literally get away with murder and never, you know, mm-hmm. get their, um, you know, funding, you know, taken away. But, you know, a church, you know, that does one thing questionable, you know, like, you know, buy the kid a Butterfinger candy bar and, you know, they'd be in jeopardy of, you know, losing that money. And so, it's, you know, like that, you know, um, old commercial where, you know, um, I think it was like all state or one of the car insurance things were like, you know, like, you know, finding money. And then, um, you know, that competitor one comes up there and the guy has the dollar that's on the fishing lure and, you know, that person's trying to get it. You know, it's, it's, you know, kind of, it's kind of like, you know, like that, but, uh, but yeah, there's, you know, definitely a lot of, man, phew, it's, yeah, it's his own animal. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, we, there's always that. Um, there's always that that image, you know, of the the greedy preacher, you know, demanding more and more money from from the people. It's interesting this idea that you could also get into this line because of the money making opportunities from grants, and so you say that if a if a church, you know, gets a grant writer, how do they get a grant writer? Do they, do they pay someone to write them a grant? Is it like finding someone to, to do your taxes? 
It is. I, I got a couple of friends that are professional grant writers, and they make. I think they start out at like eighty thousand a year, and they will, um, you know, just they'll they'll have a certain set that they write for and you know do for, and um, they'll just. I mean, yeah, the people I know won't embellish, but they'll, mm-hmm. you know, make it a little more, you know, like, hey, you know, these people deserve the grant more than these people here because of this, this, and this. And they use, you know, very evidence-based, you know, things. And they'll, and they'll tell, you know, the organization, like, hey, you may not have a good chance of this because of your track record, but we'll try anyway. And, and we'll mention that, that this is what you're doing to get started and all. So, you know, if you have a you know good base of money to start off with, um, you'll you'll be able to get more grants because you'll have more traction and you know, mm-hmm. somebody that's you know just starting out with you know pocket change basically. Yeah, so I'm seeing this uh, incentive, you know, to keep making more money. I'm seeing this incentive for a grant writer to get hired by this church and then get him more money. And it's kind of this, um, you know, this growth of money for for both parties. Yeah, it it definitely is. Hmm. And of course, again, not to say that it's always wrong, but um, how far are we traveling away from the church's original message and intent to, you know, preach the gospel? Yeah, and that that's what I, you know, try to, you know kind of boil it back to is, you know, is, you know, and, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that we should not really, you know, uh, major on the minors. So no real denominational issues, you know, was, you know, Jesus and him crucified and, you know, just show the love by, you know, your, your actions, you know, and, mm-hmm. you know, very, um, rarely do you really need to speak if your actions are, you know, showing what's, what's going on. And our local church actually, you know, has, a you know, great, you know, message behind that where we just, we just do stuff. You know, they, they started this campaign and they didn't put their uh, name on it, but it was, um, it, it was called love is why. And, uh, our church is Christway church and, and, um, Ottawa, Tennessee. So if you, you know, want to, you know, Google them and, you know, uh, look up some stuff as well. Um, yeah, they, yeah, it's, it's more or less like, you know, let's do the little things for people. And let's do, mm-hmm. you know, this and show them that we care and not put, you know, a church behind that. You know, just put, you know, Jesus loves you. No, he really does. And, you know, just, you know, get out there, you know, with people, do life with people. And, um, you know, because I have a, a friend that, you know, played um, baseball with and he got a letter from the IRS and he's like, uh, you say you're a tax person here. You help me deal with this. And so it took, you know, a couple of months and, you know, and I told him, I was like, you know, you may have to pay about half of that because what it was, was a um, employer had misclassified him as a um, independent contractor when he was actually an employee. And so they're coming after him for self-employment tax. And so I figured, you know, it'd probably be about, you know, half of what he would actually owe. And, um, and so he was okay with that, and you know, so I, you know, you know, showed him what to write, how to do it, and him and his wife, you know, went to the IRS person and you know met with with them, and um, you know, long story short, they got a letter in the mail, and he sent it to me. He's like, uh, it says I don't know anything, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I believe that's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> 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 and uh, you know, because usually they'll they'll do that. But what they're doing is they're building a case against this, um, employer. And I've seen it, you know, kind of trickle down through the state where, you know, this employer is being, you know, I mean, you could even argue that he's, he's being picked on, but you know, if he's, you know, not abiding by the rules, you know, that's what they're going to come after and do. You know, I had to recuse myself out of that one, but Hmm. it's, it's just, it's just funny, you know, just to, you know, see things like that, but you know, he, you know, he's more receptive to, to you know things, and he actually started, you know, coming to church with us and and all, and he called me for you know advice every now and then. But you know, it's not until somebody figures out that you actually do care about him before they'll, you know, be you know receptive. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, 
I was thinking mm -hmm. on a couple of things when when you're you're mentioning a. It, I think about the the phrase in the Bible, you know, uh, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, or something like that. I'm sure I I'm sure I messed that up. I'm really terrible <laughs> at recall, but uh, but the the concepts there. Um, yeah, you know. It, it seems like uh, you have to pay a lot of attention to what both hands are doing when you're, uh, you know, applying for grants and uh, <laughs> and things like that. Oh, definitely. It's it's one of those things where you know my wife is a, a school teacher, and you know they were applying for a grant for their um, uh, summer program, and you know, and they and they ran it through a couple of grant writers. And there was one of them that said, this this thing looks perfect, but you have a run on sentence here and they will deny you if you keep that run on sentence there. And this person has been doing this for close to 20 years. Wow. And so I'm like, well, let's fix that run on sentence for you. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that comes to mind, too, um, would be the uh, a lot of the uh, conservative churches that um, would – I'm sure if they could or somehow they get away with it, um, you know, preaching against uh, socialism and state funded, uh, you know, uh, subsidies and things like that. Uh, but then it's a big focus of their of their church, which is now a company. Right. And, you know, that's and it's that's why, I, you know, love our uh, church there is because, he, you know, it's just, you know, and he doesn't, you know, come out and say, you know, socialism is bad, you know, um, you know, free market capitalism is great. You know, he, you know, goes to the, you know, the Bible and, you know, shows you exactly what markets are supposed to look like and what, you know, um, as far as, you know, meeting the needs of people looks like and, you know, how, you know, we as, as believers have the eyes and ears to see exactly what needs, you know, need to be met and, you know, we can, you know, take out of, you know, our abundance. And I'm glad that he said this part because he, what he said was, he's like, you can't help somebody else if you don't have your household taken care of. You can't help mm -hmm. others effectively if you have debt. You can't help others if you, you know, still have issues that you need to, you know, help out with. And, you know, of course, you know, we all have issues, but, you know, the thing is, you know, what are we, you know, doing with those issues and we're letting them stand in between, you know, what God has for us or we, you know, working through those issues so we can help somebody else work through those issues, that thing. Right. Well, uh, and yeah. I think that that's really all the questions that I have. Um, you know, this is something that I'm just not very uh, informed on uh, until today. Um, is there anything that maybe I've missed, uh, anything that our audience, uh, maybe they're asking themselves right now, but we haven't gone over it. Um, is there anything that you can, um, you know, kind of anticipate and, and answer? Uh, that's, <laughs> there's, there's so many different ways to, you know, go on, um, you know, it's just far as really what you can, uh, you know, go about, but, you know, if, if one does want to start a um, a five hundred one c three, you know, definitely, you know, be as you know prayerful and as vigilant as you can, and then also, you know, even if you don't want to start a five hundred one c three, be as prayerful and vigilant as you can, because you know God's put on the heart of all of us to, you know, share the gospel, and it's in you know any form or you know different ways, you know, you know everywhere that I go, you know, I'll you know want to you know. You know, share the gospel with people, and I don't want to, you know, ever, you know, turn somebody away just because of, you know, a job title or, you know, whatnot. And and so, you know, I think if anybody, you know, hops into business to, you know, you know, start, you know, what would be, you know, considered a nonprofit, you know, make sure it's with a lot of prayer, make sure that you have people around you that are well versed in different areas that can, you know, that can really speak wisdom into your life and make sure that, you know, one, you're taking it one step at a time. Second of all, give you sound financial advice. And then third of all, you know, just, you know, you just need that person, you know, I always call it the, the Uncle Charles, because I had a, you know, I had an uncle 
you know, Charles that, you know, he just, he would look at, you know, different, all areas of things. He was very pessimistic, but <laughs> he was just, and he was right on the money on, you know, 90% of things. So, um, as I wised up and got older, you know, I would, you know, I would go ask him and I go ask my, you know, grandmother on a few different things. But if you have somebody like that in your life, you don't necessarily have to agree with them, but, you know, bring them in on, you know, decisions and all and just, you know, and don't worry about, you know, what the government says you can and cannot do. And it's just, it'll just, it'll open you up to, you know, other different things where, you know, a 501c3 would actually limit you because, you know, you're having to, you know, deal with all the, the red tape there. And then also, you know, um, you know, the state, you know, um, you know, filings and, you know, federal filings and all, you know, yeah, of course, you know, we still have to, you know, deal with taxes, but, you know, on the smaller end of, you know, things, it's just a lot better not having yourself as a, um, uh, under, you know, um, a 501c3 corporation type, type of a deal. But yeah, just, you know, just go out there and follow what, you know, God has for you and, be very cautious about, you know, where, you know, other little money comes from. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, uh, we can look at the, the opportunity to at least be tax exempt and, and, um, we can be in favor of that. And, um, you know, most people listening are, you know, advocates for the phrase taxation is theft and any opportunity that we see for anyone to, you know, not pay their taxes, uh, to avoid paying it. Um, you know, that's usually a win, but we also have to keep in mind in this situation, uh, what's the cost, what's the, uh, the possible compromise that, that we get into, um, with taking on, you know, this designation. Yeah, most definitely. You gotta, you definitely have to weigh the costs and you know, every area of, you know, of really anything in your life. Well, David, I, I appreciate it. Um, is there uh, anything that you'd like to give to the audience to, if they have questions about uh, taxes or anything like that, that they could run by you? Is there a, a place online that they could, uh, you know, look you up? Uh, you can uh, check my, uh, I have a personal well, I have a personal Facebook page, but I also have a, a professional Facebook page. It's uh, uh, David J. Morrison. And then I also have a, a WordPress uh, site that has my contact information on there as well. It's um, davidjacobmorrison.wordpress.com. And uh, I'll be more than happy to you know, answer any questions, concerns, or anything along those lines. And like I said, if I don't know the answer, I, I know people who do have the answer, and I can get that for you. I appreciate your time today and have a good one. No, you too. Thank you. All right. Thank you, David. Our church is a 501c in the IRS code section three. All right. I hope you enjoyed that discussion on churches and the 501c3 nonprofit status. Uh, it's definitely something to think about. I think I said it during the conversation, but you know, we're always in favor of someone getting out of having to pay taxes, but um, when we think about the strings that are attached and the possible compromise that can come from taking that nonprofit status, it's something that we should be careful with, and it's something that we should uh, put a lot of thought and prayer into and hopefully avoid the negative outcomes that can come from that. But thank you for checking out the show. And if you'd like to support the show, there's a few different ways you can do that. One, uh, please consider leaving a five-star rating and review on iTunes. That will help us get the message out there and uh, get more listeners and grow the show. And the second way would be through Patreon. If you visit anarchochristian.com slash subscribe, that will take you to our Patreon page where you'll find a few different ways that you can financially support the show. As well, we are on Amazon for t-shirts, and if you visit the Amazon link through the website, that will give us a small commission at no additional charge to you. So, until next time, 
Grace and peace. No king but Christ. And now we Sunday morning, there's a strict federal warning to avoid topics X, Y, and Z. Oh yeah, our church is a 501c. In the IRS code section 3, now we can preach tax exemption right along with redemption. Yeah, our church is a 501c. Thank you for listening to the Anarcho Christian Podcast. Subscribe to our email notifications at anarchochristian.com. Like us on Facebook.com backslash anarcho Christian and follow us on Twitter at anarcho XP. Subscribe to our podcast and YouTube to join us next time as we continue to evaluate the relationship between the Christian and the state. No king but Christ. This has been a Pax Libertas Productions podcast.